The winner for the title of strongest sorcerer in history has been declared, and it's none other than Satoru Gojo. That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! The promise of Gojo's victory was made to everyone in chapters 3 and 221. And frankly, he's lived up to our expectations. Even in the face of all odds, Gojo bagged a victory for the sorcerer's side. Something that hasn't happened even once throughout the story. Haven't you guys noticed that in every single fight so far, the curses have won? It has been L after L for the heroes. That's what makes this victory so much more meaningful since we've been in pain from the very beginning. However, Gojo has defied fate, setting up the path that would change the history of not only sorcery, but the entire world. He achieved this with hollow purple, leaving a scar on the city as a testament to his domination over Sukuna. The man harnessed Oppenheimer and did a new this don't miss. That's right. After Gojo completely obliterated Agito with blue, he regenerates his arm, a feat comparable to Sukuna himself. But how could Gojo even do this if his reverse curse technique output was low, as Shoko stated? The answer is Black Flash. On the surface, this only seems like a boost in power and stats for the sorcerers. But the real effect of Black Flash runs. D. According to Nanami, just hitting a single black flash, regardless of whether it was skill or simply luck, enables the user to enter a zone like athletes experience in sports. In this state of elite focus, manipulating curse energy becomes as simple and natural as breathing. This results in the feeling that the user is at the center of everything, like omnipotence. Yuji first displayed this ability against Mahito, as black flash allows you to utilize 120% of your potential. And if we account for everything, this is proof that Yuji will reach way above the special grade, just like his sensei Gojo believed. As he even stated, the grading system is outdated for the new generation he taught. This isn't even accounting for Yuji being soaked in Sukuna's curse energy to inherit his technique. Nor is Yuji actually human, and he has gained a new technique to swap souls. On top of that, Yuji is blessed by the spark of black, which allows him to almost willingly use it and replenish curse energy, essentially having infinite critical hits, which is why Chosso would say Yuji is a demon god and Kenjaku believes he's the eye of the storm for the new era. So all in all, judging from the revelation in chapter 235, we need to start putting respect on our main protagonist as Yuji needs Sukuna to feel his misery as he claimed. But speaking of respect, we have to appreciate how every concept set up in the story ties into this fight in the most genius way. Be it anti-domain techniques, chants, or hand signs, Gojo hit two black flashes and his demeanor completely changed. Look at it. That's the face of a man who knows he is walking out of this fight with a win. In fact, his expression closely resembles the same in chapter 75 when he became the honored one against Toji. There's no doubt that this is a deliberate decision because Toji experienced an out of character unease looking at Gojo, which ultimately made him lose. As a result, the King of Curses Sukuna experiences the rush of nervousness for the first time in his life in 1000 years. That man is asking to be saved. <laughs> Now, this is comparable to chapter 234. Gojo admitted to feeling the taste of defeat creeping up on him, something he hadn't felt in more than a decade. Well, he harnessed his sense and hit Mahoraga with another black flash, appearing in front of Sukuna again to shock him into total dread as they engaged in taijutsu. Now, you may be wondering, ABD, ABD, how come Sukuna doesn't activate black flash too? The cards are against him. That's because unlike Gojo, he may have never experienced this feeling before as everyone was beneath him. That's why he never had to learn reverse curse technique burnout until meeting Gojo to copy it instantly. Plus, Sukuna is nervous, therefore not in the zone to activate it. However, you can use Black Flash via luck, but it doesn't seem to be on Sukuna's side at this point of time. So as proven already, Gojo is superior to Sukuna in hand-to-hand -hand combat, which is why he is 
was able to easily block Sukuna's punch and thrash him into Mahoraga and gear up for another Black Flash punch. While Sukuna managed to survive it in chapter 232, Mahoraga had to protect him this time round because he can't do anything without daddy's help. It's okay to be weak. He admitted in chapter 234 he is not in his best physical condition and would die to purple. However, as Sukuna and Maharaga are blown away, Gojo starts his chant for red. Sukuna begins sensing Gojo's strategy and his next move. Every significant attack from a sorcerer is preceded by a spark of curse energy that swells up within them, similar to the short hit effect happening right before a domain expansion. Needless to say, massive moves moves require this spot, and even though Gojo has extremely efficient curse energy consumption, it's no surprise that even he experiences this requirement. Therefore, to activate his new power of unlimited hollow, he starts the incantations that Sukuna easily concluded that he was about to fire a red. This shows how perceptive and quick Sukuna is that he can accurately guess Jujutsu in a heated moment. Therefore, to counter Gojo's red, Sukuna decided to make Maharaga tank it to defend himself, as well as facilitate the Shikigami's adaptation. If you forgot, Maharaga had already adapted to Gojo's blue and infinity attacks earlier, leaving him with only red and purple attacks. But this is Satoru freaking Gojo. Subverting all expectations, he instantly changes his stance and shoots the red attack into the sky. This thoroughly and rightfully shocks Sukuna as he panics into giving Maharaga an instant order to chase after the attack. Well, well, well. The community definitely did not think that this chapter would end up contributing to the Save me Maharaga Kun meme, but it just did. Bro is a fraud. Are you not ashamed of yourself? Following his instruction, Maharaga launches itself into flight, only for us to discover that Gojo's genius plan was in motion to outmaneuver Sukuna for the third time in this fight. It was for sure shadowed in chapter 52. Remember the maximum blue attack Gojo used to destroy Agito? It turns out that even after crushing his opponent, blue was still left over, just waiting for a red attack from him. Because red and blue, repulsion and attraction, mixing together creates imaginary mass. Gojo's most destructive technique is created as a result, hollow purple. Essentially, Gojo can keep a ball of red or blue on standby so he can use it when he needs them. Maharaga follows it with a single thought running in its brain. Completion. I'm confused. I'm confused right now, G. Well, 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 again, don't worry. I'm here to explain. So make sure to hit the like button and the notification bell to continue to help us create these videos. Especially those of you that buy a shirt from AnimeDrip.shop. We have a fire one on sale that you can check out. But essentially, since Maharaga was acting on Sukuna's command, its only goal was to zone in on Blue to eradicate it. But this backfired in the most wicked way possible as Gojo used this to his advantage. Maharaga was totally unaffected by Blue's pull-in effect, whilst Gojo exploited it. He used Blue's gravity for a teleportation-like instant movement. Remember that Gege confirmed in an interview that Gojo has the ability to teleport. This follows a theory in physics called the Alcubierre warp drive that would allow an object to achieve a speed much higher than light by contracting space in front of it whilst expanding space behind it. Gojo moving at light speed then punches the sh** out of Mahoraga by using its own adaptation against it. While Sukuna uses this chance to disrupt and even potentially destroy Red using Max Elephant's water through piercing blood, because he really needs it, the water would have actually destroyed Red, effectively stopping the carnage that happened next. This is why he feels smug, declaring that Gojo was late in punching him. But once again, Gojo takes him by total surprise. He begins chanting once more. But this time for the blue attack. 
enhancing its output and thereby strengthening its gravitational pull. This allowed it to pull the water that was moving towards the red to itself. This is such a big brain move by Gege Akatami, as he incorporated the simple laws of physics in such a creative way in this fight to not make this seem like an ass pull at all. This is an anime bullshit science. It's just Gojo being a go. This also tells us how much of a gambler Gojo is. Think about it. Gojo has been nothing short of inventive throughout this fight, using a new power called Unlimited Hollow, expanding his domain, shrinking it, and even using RCT to heal brain damage. Now, whilst being mid-air, he chants the incantation for Hollow Purple, combining the stray orbs of red and blue to create his ultimate attack. Unlike purple we saw in chapters 52 and 75 against Hanami and Toji, this had no target and no direction. Satoru fucking Gojo essentially dropped a new Seeing Sukuna completely terrified for the first time in the story feels awfully satisfying, I'm telling you. As this moment even mirrors chapter 115, when Sukuna mocked Jogo by calling him pathetic. Except now, the roles are reversed. Sensing this huge attack, even Yuta, who was eager to aid Gojo in this fight, apologizes to Kusukabe. He realizes that having anyone, even someone as strong as Yuta on the battlefield, would only be a weakness for for Gojo. After all, he is at his best when he's fighting alone. So if Yuta had joined the battle, Gojo's new purple wouldn't occur as Yuta would have died and Gojo wouldn't risk that. It proceeds to blow everything up. Clearly another reference to the Miriam vs Netero fight in Hunter x Hunter when poor man's rose was utilized. Except that Gojo is alive and well. And bloody hell, so is that shirt, bro. Like, what's that even made from? It can literally solo the whole verse at this point. Why is it called your shirt, bro? Oh, wait, I, uh, that was a bit sus. No, no. He's got a point. However, with Maharaga's wheel destroyed, Sukuna is alive with his left arm ripped off. There's a huge difference between the damage it did to both of them. Since it was Gojo's own curse energy, he took on less damage. Gojo demonstrated the difference between dying to win and risking death to win through this attack. As he told Megami in chapter 58, he risked everything to win, but didn't destroy himself unlike Megami would always choose to or even use. Yuki. Overall, Gojo is in a superior position as he even got back his reverse curse technique output through Black Flash. But Sukuna? He's lost Mahoraga, the only factor to break through Gojo's infinity. He has slow healing and no domain amplification because he can't use his domain from the brain damage he got. Keeping all this in mind, Kusukabe and Yuji conclude that Gojo has really won. Even the bloody editor note says the battle result of the strongest battle is engraved in Shinjuku. Like, bruh, remember when Sukuna called Gojo just a fish upon his cutting board? <laughs> remember when Gojo tanked Malevolent Shrine like it was fine? <laughs> remember after the domain battle he called Gojo an ordinary guy who was born in an era without him but then he ends up copying the same ordinary guy and then gets immense brain damage? <laughs> Remember when Sukuna claimed to be the honored one and strongest? Not anymore. But with Gojo winning the title of strongest of all time, he still hasn't accomplished his entire goal. Part of which is to save his foster son, Megami. Remember in chapter 220, our crew was discussing ideas to do so, but they had no means to achieve this unless Sukuna was beaten and battered up. Hence, this is a perfect time to act as Yuji even has a mysterious soul swapping ability right now and there is a missing Sukuna finger that Gojo hid. However, we have to address the elephant in the room. The red flag that everything is going a bit too well for Gojo. After all, it's hard to imagine Sukuna getting completely defeated without revealing his trump card. There's open and all his other techniques, but they cannot bypass infinity because if they could, Sukuna would have used it from the start as he isn't playing around. And now that Maharaga is gone, it's hard 
got to see how Gojo will die as his allies are on standby. In all likelihood, Sukuna will use some tricks as a last ditch effort. He hasn't revealed Yoruzu's gift. Although it is certain it cannot be a curse tool like the inverted spirit of heaven because it was explicitly stated that Yoruzu can't create those. However, if she gave her curse technique to Sukuna, maybe he is built different with his knowledge and efficiency where he can achieve the impossible. Sukuna deduced everything about Yoruzu's curse technique upon her death perfectly, which made her die in delight that Sukuna noticed her for once. She constructed and showed her love to Sukuna by constructing her heart as she stated. But if Sukuna uses her power, it only shows his hypocrisy and reliance on love that he so happens to claim is meaningless. His ideology would be challenged and therefore defeated by Gojo's collectivism as Gojo has won the title. And since curses will always be curses, which we were reminded of in chapter 213, he would exploit love to get what he requires for victory, as Angel was someone that posed a threat to make him lose. So Sukuna used Megami's memories with Hanakurasu to pretend to love her, but then consumed her since he's a cannibal. We are told in chapter 213 to never forget the true nature of a curse. Therefore, the label that Angel gave Sukuna as being the disgraced one fits perfectly as he lies, cheats, and steals. He goes against God's law by removing the existence and memories of others completely, defiling the memories of those that die, which Todo told Yuji never to do as a sorcerer when he lost his will against Mahito in Shibuya. In chapter 219, Yoruzu created a perfect sphere following the theme of Gojo and Sukuna's fight. They are accomplishing the impossible every other chapter due to their overwhelming power. A true sphere has no contact area and generates infinite pressure as a result, making it untouchable. With Sukuna adapting to her technique and instantly understanding it, therefore, an immovable object of infinity versus an unstoppable force of true sphere. Infinite pressure against infinite space. Can it pierce through? Let me know in the comments. Theoretically, it may create a black hole. That means all the foreshadowing of Gojo's death will be true. He will die a gruesome one just like he mentioned, paralleling Toji Fushigoro with his body cut apart. Now to enjoy more peak fiction, why not watch the video on your screen right now regarding Boruto's time skip? It has finally started.